You have to know your opposition. Your opposition is, and this is just taken from a recent uh, memo that came out from uh, probably our arch enemy, Jane, uh, a guy named Frank Luntz, and I don't want to. And I, I'll give him a ton of credit because this guy is extremely smart. He understands everything uh, about communications. He understands how people uh, react to fear. Fear makes them very conservative. They worry about things. He likes to engender fear. Um, he's the one who gave us uh, partial birth abortions, uh, clear skies, clean skies, I think they called it. Go down the list. He was a, a pollster for Luntz, I mean, for uh, Gingrich about 15, 20 years ago. And now he makes, he does very well, but he is really the, the man behind the, the words that the Republicans use. He comes out with something, and we actually timed it one time. It was eight hours after he put out a memo and had a briefing that we had three or four different congressmen using the exact same words filmed. And um, it was really quite, uh, quite impressive. And so what he actually came out lately, and, and probably the biggest thing that's made, that's given me more hope about this is that the 99%, uh, the occupiers, whatever you want to call them, has, have really changed a lot of the debate. And I got, you know, and this is in a, uh, really quite impressive what's happened with the discussion. Because, you know, we, I've been talking about all this problem of, about our taxation system for years. Nobody cares what I have to say. But the, now it is actually a subject in the national dialogue, the fact that, that you know, low-income people pay a lot more than upper-income people. And the upper-income people have, have, have been a huge change where their taxes have been cut. And lower-income people, their taxes have been increased. And it's the it's social justice issue. It, it drives everything. And one of the reasons we have a lot of the problems we have now is that uh, working people have been working harder and harder. Women have gone to work, they've uh, hawked their houses, and they still have not made more money. And it's, you know, our productivity is up dramatically, and our incomes are not for almost all of us. But interestingly, uh, he does a lot of polling, and he found that, that people, and these, I'm, I'm, this is really, this is what he says, okay? This is not what I say. But this is what he says that this is the problem. He says people don't think capitalism as a word is very good anymore, it's immoral. And he wants everybody to use economic freedom. I would suggest sometimes that we have to go through these, that we think about how we talk about different things. But, you know, capitalism, you know, we can say we like capitalism, but we got to make sure it works right. Uh, on defending Wall Street, he doesn't think we can do that. But so he says, just change it, the problem is Washington. I think we have to make sure that when we talk about well, when people bring up problems with the economy, there's a Wall Street problem. Also, there's an insurance problem. Both of those run together. They both reside in the same street. He talks about we shouldn't talk about taxing the rich, but taking from the rich. I think when you talk about developing a uh, resource or a fund source or something, if you have people support very much taxing people over about $250,000. Um, and so if you talk about taxing people who are well-to-do, it actually does resonate and people do care about it. On the middle class, um, he wants us to get away from talking about the middle class because that's you, and he wants to change it to uh, ta uh, ta the hardworking taxpayers. I have no problem with hardworking taxpayers, but the point is the middle class, people believe in this country, the middle class is being eroded, and I think we have to keep going back to the idea that the middle class is being eroded, we gotta do something about it. And you know, while we care about taxes and taxpayers, we want to make sure that the middle class doesn't get taxed. When, they, when they're, they're trying to obfuscate it by saying hardworking working taxpayers, which means you know, high income people who pay a lot of taxes. And the interesting thing, they want to move it off jobs. Jobs are very real and practical. And very honestly, they want to talk about careers. My point there with careers, you can't have a career without a job. And the reason jobs are really resonating is that people need jobs. They want jobs, and that's the, the first practical thing you do on the first step to a career. Um, they want, don't want to talk about government spending, but rather waste. Um, they actually are afraid of the contents of the law, and they don't want us to talk about pre-existing conditions, about the prevention that's in the bill, and about rating in insurance. Those are issues they lose on. And what they want to talk about, uh, deficits, tax cuts, the big debate right now, the Uber debate, the uh, overall debate is whether we have basically a deficit problem, or we have a jobs problem, or a economic problem. And what everybody, is, if they win the debate, very honestly, if it's a deficit problem, we are going to end up having cuts no matter what, and we have nothing left. If we talk about jobs, humans, 
uh, healthcare fits in that, uh, then, then we win the debate. And very honestly, the American people are over here in the jobs and the healthcare and a better life for them and their kids. Very important to remember. Uh, personalizing, they don't think we should personalize it. They want to talk about irresponsible others. We had to uh, talk a little bit about the immigrants here. Uh, you can't believe how much that's embedded in the population. That every time you talk about a problem with the healthcare system, everybody points to illegal immigrants. Uh, I do want to make a comment on that because we did a lot of work with the uh, immigration groups trying to figure out how we actually talk about this issue. And very honestly, uh, uh, there are there. I want to go through different groups, but we were able to move every group into being uh, under a group that people would really support uh, as far as health care. The group that's being really disparaged right now are immigrants who are legal immigrants. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of the discussion, people often, you know, kind of confuse illegal and legal immigrants. And so when you talk about immigrants getting care, even though they're legal citizens of the United States, and especially if they have brown skin, people don't like the idea of giving them benefits. So you'll see rules about excluding, and a lot of states have things where they say for the first five years you can't have any benefits. My own state passed a law like that, which is being contested by an organization I'm on the board of, and we're in court right now on that. But the point is that, that uh, uh, people are, are, uh, have, have really gotten into this whole immigration thing. The interesting thing is people, 72% of Americans support immigrants getting health care if they're on a pathway to citizenship. And so I think what's happened with this bill, the politics of the bill over the last couple of years has been because of the opposition to immigrants, they got excluded, especially uh, non undocumented immigrants. And uh, what's happened in the future here, though, is that we, you know, I think the fight is going to be over whether it's going to be a pathway for people who are living here. And that's going to, once they get to that point, I think we have a better chance. But that's probably going to be our opportunity. Elderly and nursing homes, I mentioned all that. Um, the other thing, also when we talk about kids, people think about irresponsible parents, very honestly. And so you have, when you talk about kids, you have to talk about kids and you can't make the parents irresponsible. You tell stories, you can't have an opportunity for people to fall into the opposition arguments. So talk about stories where kids, in fact, you know, have been hurt by the system or can't have a future. And not, don't let them get around to the point of saying it's all because of their parents. Also, it's interesting. These are some of the things uh, that they're also saying. Well, I won't go into it, but the second one, their occupier, on the Occupy 99% thing, they're, they're losing so badly that they're saying to their, uh, their friends, we get it, it's, I understand the problem, and here are some Republican, basically, uh, uh, solutions. And the public solutions, basically, in this situation, are going to be things like, well, let's just text, you know, get the job creators going, cut taxes, get rid of the health care bill and all the expenses. And that doesn't solve the problem. And they also say, always oh, blame Washington. So, strategy. Um, the effective strategy, I think, I'm going to lay into this and I'll give you some reasons why I think this makes, uh, why it works. We have to talk about people, the middle class jobs, the 99%. That is what people care about. The majority of Americans are there on this right now, but we have to make sure the conversation is about that. We have to be positive. We have to educate the base and persuadables. That, that means we have to really get out there and we talk about education uh, in this whole thing. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but we do educate, we do move people. And that means we have, that's hard work, that's heavy lifting, and that's some work we have to do. We also have to push back on all the BS that people throw at us. You know, you can't believe all the arguments people throw out. And you have to just say that's wrong, and this is why it's wrong in one or two sentences. And then you have to say, why are they asking that question, number two. And the third thing you do is say, and this is good for my community and my neighbors and my family because of A, B, and C. You have to do it fast, you do, do it hard. We have to focus back, always back to the content. And one of the important things in this whole discussion is, and especially for legislators, um, you know, a lot of legislators are a little bit standoffish about the whole, about the bill about the Affordable Care Act overall. And they're saying basically, well, the public's kind of against it, uh, so we should stay away from it. But it's interesting, if they put their arms around the, their public, their constituents, and say, you know, I'm on the side of my constituent. I have, here's my constituent, you know, Joy or say, Mary, who has a kid who had got excluded because of pre-existing conditions. Or how about the 
the doctor who was up here earlier saying, my employee couldn't afford the care that they were, or the, the cost was, they got excluded from regular insurance because of having diabetes. How many of us have diabetes? We can't kick her off insurance and leave her out. And if you say, I can't let that happen. In fact, I'm gonna fight all I can to make sure that insurance companies, and very honestly, you have to say, and the government works right for these people. We want to make sure government works right. We want to make sure insurance companies work right for our, our constituents. And not only that, if you're a congressman, which aren't even running the here today, but if they're any congressman, they actually can say, and the bill makes me get my health care from that exchange, from that marketplace. And if I get my health care from there, I'm going to make sure it works for me. And I think that's, that's a very powerful thing. They say that. They win the argument. People are on their side.